The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Thursday edition, 5th of uh, May. We're looking at the Dow. Oops, let me get this updated right there. We're looking at the Dow having a spectacular session yesterday, um, giving back a huge chunk this morning. It's down 542 at 32,521. We're just getting close to an area of support that really has to hold. And what we're looking at is uh, within the context of the high that was made yesterday of 34,117. Uh, this is a, I mean, we're talking about a 600 point pullback here or five something, almost 600 point. This is not to be sneezed at. And one of the things that I look at is how has the market taken off in prior um, lows. In other words, the 24th of, uh, was that January, uh, um, February, and then 24th of March. Um, no, February and January. So what we're looking at here within the context of the uh, big move up, we've seen this pic picture before, but there's a very big difference. And one of the one of the one of the things that I was looking at for subscribers to my opening call, <clears throat> and one of the reasons why we've been long uh, all week on the Dow. Um, and still hold wrong at this particular point is that this is the very moment that you were starting to see some kind of uh, some kind of support in areas like the semiconductors had a big move up yesterday actually a Chapman wave Roman candle now we've gone into almost the wick if, if the SMHs start to trade for 90 minutes or more below 237 they're at 238.44 right now. Gosh, you can get a get a, a, a quite a sharp move down to the low of yesterday. That'll be really tough. But if this holds in, but for some reason, this is an oversold rally that we saw yesterday, triggered by the Fed. Ah, it was really an excuse, you know, 50, 50 basis. Well, I don't know, what, that was nothing. What was really key was that there was a short squeeze. There was some new buying. I was looking at some of, the, uh, for instance, some of the stocks that we own. Uh, that have had uh, quite sharp pullbacks. These are longer term positions. They had a really good session yesterday. And that to me said that we're now starting to see uh, the rotation in some stocks that are under the radar, that don't have anything to do with, with yields, don't have anything to do with uh, uh, all those, you know, China, what, the lockdown in, in the, the whole shipping area is just, uh, we're going to pay a penalty for that for sure. But at the same time, if you're looking at stocks that are kind of independent of that, that's a good, that's a really, I think that's a good thing. So here we go. We're looking at within the context of, for instance, I looked at Deer and it had a fabulous session yesterday. We once owned it, uh, did okay. Um, but I, we got out of it and then it gapped down and went from the high of 446.76, this double top high, and it plunged to the 200 period moving average at 371.60. And then it ran up. Yesterday, very nicely, and then it pulled back. But deer is also, I mean, it's agriculture, it's tractors, farm equipment. So I didn't really think it was worth getting into. You know, I've made a big deal about these gaps. What happens when you go sideways and you're unable to fill the gap? How the how the lows of the rectangle formation that forms below the gap can be such a such a, a magnet to draw the price back in every time it tries to rally. So let me use this now, just as if we have nothing to do with deer right now. It was just something I was looking at. I liked the action yesterday. Even today, it hasn't taken out the low of yesterday. <laughs> the day is young. We'll see what happens there. So now let me go on. So we were looking at. Did I do this in my in the update? And now let me just run this again. So the Dow, INDU, uh, the Dow is down very sharply now. It's over 600 points down. This at uh, 33,453. You're looking at the S&P. Uh, I think I did that right. The S&P is down very sharply at 2, 42.06, down 93 now. Wow, that's a huge give back. QQQ, 
uh, trading at 319.30. Oh, oh, it's real close to starting a, an even bigger move if we can't find some support very soon. At 319, down 10. You're looking at the IWM, the Russell 2000. We, it'll take a little while for the small caps to find favor. So they're acting poorly right now. And then I just wanted to say once again, gold is given back a chunk of the candle, but it's still up from the close yesterday where the 200 period moving average was so important. And it's at 1888 of 20, but it had hit 1910. So let me just show you silver. And then we want to get into some nitty gritty because so many people still keep asking me about the golds as they ask all the hosts at TFNN. Uh, 22,830, uh, sorry, 22,830 is the silver uh, up 43 cents after the gap up and now sliding. But this really is the issue, surely, with the dollar still the currency of, of import, the currency that has the most respect at this particular point around the world. You've got to expect that as long as the dollar is holding, you're going to see some difficulty with stocks like a triple M. Uh, had a big move yesterday, but when you look at the monthly chart, uh, 3M is trading down 274 at 151.49, made a peak E on the last high, around right about the 215-ish um, area, slumps down to the 141, has a peak D, pulls back, has a retest, and then it breaks out to a new leg up yesterday. And you would think that the dollar would have some impact. So we're going to see. I'm going to use some of these stocks just kind of as a benchmark. How are they doing based on the um, the dollar strength? But the dollar's had strength for quite a while. And companies, this is what companies tend to do. Once it's just like the market. Once it establishes that there's an issue, over a period of time, it tries to deal with it, the issue in its own way. And in this particular case. Uh, companies with foreign exposure that are getting money, that, you know, dollars with the dollar so high, means that <clears throat> their income stream is less. Um, we're going to be watch, watching to see how they do because they do, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what they do, but they do manage to at least alleviate some of the uh, negativity there. So that was Triple M. I, now what I want you to do is I, the questions that I want to get to, but I want you to look first of all at uh, crude oil. Crude oil is trading right now up a dollar forty-four. It had a bigger move earlier on. It is a leg C. The MACD is good. Stochastic still weak at seventy-one percent. On balance volumes increasing. The nine is still over the fourteen. So crude oil is still in an uptrend uh, within that uh, lower rectangle formation in the trading band, and that's really important. It has made a gray leg B in the uh, weekly chart. And their monthly chart has a peak E in place. But look at the technical still so strong. So crude oil. Just you cannot dismiss crude oil as a key component to the entire market because within that within that context, um, you, you've got to be looking at say the oil service stocks, uh, OIH, OIH is trading uh, down from the high of today at 279. Uh, it's down 461. It's full the gap. That's really important. Now let me go to the gaps. I'm just treating this like a usually Friday's the Chapman Wave technical aspect, but I'll do it today. You remember I said a whole whole I had a a week ago today, Thursday, and I've been discussing all week how the GDX cannot fill the gap. Not yet. It is attempting. It's going to take a lot more effort to build a base and use the 200 period moving average as a springboard rather than a magnet. And we'll talk about that uh, further when we get back to Dow's 572. I'll be back and I'll just show the e mini as we go into the break. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, right, folks. Uh, I'm going to get to the questions, but let me just do this because it's so important because we need to know this is uh, here at TFNN. We're all about education. Uh, Larry presented a fantastic educational. Uh, um, it was really a trade that he was discussing as he was doing it. Uh, he gave that 44 level on the um, uh, E-mini, e and he, he got in uh, and uh, just uh, the, low, the low of the day. It was just a spectacular move, beautiful. And he's got a webinar coming up, uh, is it two weeks from yesterday? Yeah, check the front page out, out. He's got a webinar coming up, and, you know, his webinars are just fabulous. So we're looking at GDXJ, which I had said had gone under the 200-period moving average, making that an incredibly difficult uh, level to close above significantly because it has to really power like a V-shaped pattern and not come back and retest. That's the only way you can get rid of it. Look how important it was his resistance and support back in February, March. And then all of a sudden what happens is it goes to this last peak, D in the Chapman wave, pulls back to a trough B and rallies it. Even today, early on, it looked like, whoa, this is great. And it still has not. I've, I've drawn in the yellow rectangle. That is the gap that it has to fill, and then it can't just fill it. It has to start trading for two out of three sessions above 46. 45, uh, 45, 90 really, but let's call it 46. And then I'll say, ha, now we can see if the, we've got the arch formation with the histogram in, in the uh, uh, in the MACD has started to improve if there's a chance of the, the uh, nine period differential green can cross the, the uh, 26 period exponential moving average to become positive. If the stochastic, oh, horrible, at 16% can get to 28th and 37, then maybe 46% and really help. So this is what we're looking at. And that is the, that for me is the importance of gaps, the way I look at it. How quickly do they get full? Do they get full? Do you go even lower or higher, whatever the case is? And look at this, yes, the GDX couldn't just touch the 14 period moving average. And now it's down at the 35, 24 level and that and down 54 cents. And that corresponds to DXY moving higher. I don't know if it'll hold all the way through to the day, but so far, fantastic count. We've been long for a subscriber to opening call for four years or something. Um, anyway, looking at the USD, JPY. So the question came in, um, 
If the USD trades the same way as uh, the dollar, that's the Japanese yen, US dollar, Japanese yen, of course, they mix of currencies there. Um, at what point do you think you'll see a drop enough to really get gold into a new, at least a shorter term bull market? Well, the issue here is not so much that I had said the other day that I would talk about Vixi, Dolly, Bondi, Goldie, and uh, um, Oily. Um, and I, I, I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. I want you to think of them all as separate entities. It's just become so important that you don't think of the correlation that we've had. Look, bonds, the TLT is down almost three points a day. The TBT, which is the inverse, uh, a question came in. Do you think we'll make that D that you were talking about in the TBT? Well, today it's got the leg D, and it's way above the left side high in the weekly chart. It's in leg E, a leg C in the monthly chart. And uh, quest, another statement said you should really try to explain the TBT today. Uh, you'd be really be doing a service to, to viewers. So, okay, I'll, I'll do that. So the TBT is the long side of bonds. But wait a minute, let's look at this. So wait, I, I'm kind of finished with the, the gap in the GDX. And, and, okay, that's done. I finished that for some people who asked me to do something on the goals. Now let's go to this chart here, which I usually show subscribers to opening call every weekend um, and what it's showing you is look at this this is the this is the 30 year t bond yield is up at 31.48 this week so 31.33 right now look at that spectacular move it has gone above the high that was made back in the week of the first week of march of 2019, and that was a 31.19. So today we've gone above that. So, and look, the cyan rallying, the, that's the five year. Brown is the TNX, the 10 year rallying. This is, we've not seen the speed of a move like this. Maybe I'll open this up. I don't usually do that. Look at the speed of this move. We have not seen, we did see a speed like that going up into the 218 to the high of, uh, I think it was May, around about May at about 32.47, 3.247, uh, back at a peak D. Um, and, and then th that was really a sharp move up and then a bumpy ride. And then it pulls back and then it goes to 34.55, November of uh, the, the week of the 2nd of November 2018, 3.455. So we are going towards that. But remember, we've been in a mega bull market in the in the Dow, uh, sorry, in the general market, um, since the 2009 March the sixth and March the ninth lows of the Dow and the S and P, what's changed is the momentum of money going in from the Fed that has supported rallies. That has changed, and you've got to respect that. So when I'm looking at the TVT, what I'm saying is that. In the context of what people pay, besides all the, I mean, you just go buy cheese, you go you go buy anything, and the prices, in fact, you've stopped saying, wow, you just keep saying, well, what is it today? Because the prices keep going higher and higher. But then when you add to it the core of, the, say, the 10-year yield, which gives you your core uh, infrastructure for payments for uh, credit cards, auto loans, just a whole bunch of things. What we're looking at is those prices are now kind of fixed and they are higher. So, but look at the, what I wanted to show was, look, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF is still trading in the rectangle near the highs. And look at the housing index. The Philadelphia housing index has had a pretty good six weeks trading between uh, a high, let's call it a high of 4.25 and a low of, say, 3.86. But it's still in the range. It's not breaking down. Surely by now it would be crumbling. Well, it's not. And that is something that you have to consider, that there is still buying going on, that higher prices say in the real estate market, uh, I, know, I know I bought uh, a timber recently um, and the person I was with who's doing part of the work with me um, said, 
oh my god a year ago i was paying like 30 or 40 percent less could even be even much lower i can't even remember he said so uh, yeah those prices are now in the infrastructure of everything that you do so again i'm kind of impressed that this is held now let's get out of that because all i wanted to show you was that there are some areas that to this moment as we're talking at 10 26 a.m eastern time on the 5th of may are still holding pretty darn well and I think that you have to respect that. And now what we've got to say is, so is this going to be just like um, the March high of the S&P in 2000? And then it wasn't until September, August, September, where the S&P went almost towards those highs that it took its tumble and that was the big move down. I see things a little differently at this particular point because the rotational aspect is really important. So yes, the TBT is absolutely imperative to, to monitor but we've been here before, so you can't say it's the end of the world, but it is very important. I'll be back because we want to talk about the questions came in about Devon Energy and a bunch of other stocks. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let's go right to it. So my first question came in uh, at Twitter. Uh, and Twitter, the question itself, is it's a good question. And I, I'm not sure that I'm the person to answer it, but I'm going to try so, uh, Basil, Twitter buyout set for 52.2. Why isn't stock trading to or near that level, uh, Jim? So, yeah, Jim, I, you know, there are so many factors. Uh, think of it this way. You're driving in Vermont uh, and you suddenly see a barn. You look across this beautiful, oh, lovely scenery and all that. And the barn doors open. And you see this and you look at the grill of this car and you recognize it in 1957 Cadillac Eldorado or whatever, okay? 
and it's just the color that you've always dreamed of. It's yellow, it's light, whatever it is, cyan color. And you stop and you drive up the driveway and you knock on the door and you say to the guy, I'll give you $17,930 for that car. And the car's been sitting there for 20 or 30 or 40 years or something. The guy never even thought about selling it or anything. And he says, oh, there are no, there are no cars anywhere. There are no people anywhere. And nobody overhears your offer. Nobody says, oh, my God, I'll give you 18900 Oh, Oh, it's worth 21 I can I know I know. I know somebody who could pay 25 grand for it. There's nobody there. So that's really the issue, that there's no competition for the buyout for, to, 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 to really um, cover it and an expense where it was trading in the $38, $40 area, and it pops up to fifty four fifty seven on the 5th of, of April, peak E in the Chapman Wave methodology. It hugs the 200-period moving average, never fills the gap. Instead, it climbs higher. So now it's in at, at 50.89. The only answer I can give you is that nobody was there at the barn in Vermont when the man made the offer for the 1957 with, with, the, with the wings, the gull wings, um, Cadillac. And all I can say is that's the only way I can answer it. There was just no competition. So it's just kind of stuck there. And I, I, <laughs> there's nothing else I can say. Normally, I was about to say, as soon as I heard it and it pulled back to the to the 47 area, I was going to say, wow, 47? If there are any offers at all, this thing will pop like crazy. That's for the subscribers to my opening call. Let's just buy it and hang in there or buy an option. And then I thought, you know, I don't hear any offers. There's just no there's no competition for this. In fact, there's there's a lot of ugliness going on. So yeah, I, I that's all I can say. That there was no other offers. It's just and not only that, um, the Twitter group was sitting there at forty and and thirty eight saying, Thank God we're off the thirty one low that was made just a, a month ago. Whew, this is great. We're up. We're up nicely, up 10 points. Um, thank goodness. And then suddenly someone comes in and puts that. So all I can say, don't worry about it. It, it just, unless you got a position, if you have a position, I'd kind of worm my way out of it. You can use options to do that. But I would definitely not hang on because I just don't, I think it's dead money more than anything else. So uh, Devon Energy, is this a brand new leg? A B or is it an old leg F? Um, it's breaking to a new all-time high. If you look at DVN trading up, uh, oh, it's unchanged right now at 67.73. The old high, one of the old highs was. I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to just keep going back. It was up in the 120s at one point. Gosh, I used to have this all notated. But anyway, it's not there now. This is a spectacular move. I suspect that the next level. It's already tackled the, the high of the 29th of May, the week of 20, the month of, yeah, in May of 2015, the high was 69.42. Uh, today's high is 68.87. <clears throat> if it can close above that, this is leg D in the monthly chart, then, then I think the tough thing is going to be, can it get to 79.57, the high of uh, June of 2014? The, the answer is yes, it can. But in the shorter term, I think we're getting close as I'm looking at it, uh, look at Devon. Let's go to different groups. Devon Energy, go to Exxon. This is a multinational. Did the same pattern, had a beautiful V-shaped pattern, and then extended up. If I can close two bars out of three above the high that was made on the 21st of um, April of 89.80, that's going to be a good thing. But if you're looking at the monthly chart, 91.51 was the high of um, the 8th of April, and today's high is... Uh, 92.05. How it closes the next few days is going to be very important. I would not consider at all shorting any of these oil sectors because oil's in play. There's just no question about it. But what I would do is I'd say at this particular point, you remember I'd say keep your core position, uh, treat it as a trade, take something off just because of money management when it was up in the 88 area. And my rule of thumb is that um, the rectangle formation, if it starts to make higher highs and higher lows, you can see a move 
just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and then be careful. Well, lo and behold, it went to about 90, just under the 9151 high. Then it plummeted down to the 79 area. Here it is at 91.78. Is this a brand new move? The MACD says could be. Stochastic at 82 says hmm, could be. Nine period. I would not mess around with this. Or if you are long, the only thing I would say is, you know what, if you want to take a little money off for money management again, that's okay. I don't know. You know, there are people, um, if I if I think of Tesla, and I'm thinking of uh, Barron, Ron Barron, is it, from here in Boston area, uh, he's been talking about a Tesla forever. And I've always had this rule, just for money management for my subscribers. I personally might not do it, but I always think of it as money management for subscribers. Take a little bit on the way up. But there are people that add to their positions on the way up because they have such incredibly strong convictions that by the time it starts to make all-time highs and then it goes on, they have huge positions. When they take something off, they're actually taking off. Sometimes they're taking off the amount they have put in initially. But uh, that's a different ball game altogether. In this particular instance, I'm saying just money management says, if you're asking the question, take a little bit off enough to make you comfortable uh, just a small percentage. That's what you really want to do. Nothing negative here about it at all. Next question was, um, let me go through the one at a time. So, um, yes, yeah, so I did that, did that. So Devon Energy, yes, it's acting really well. Um, it's in the group, DVN. And, and, and the one that wants, I think the question was, where would I add to? Now, this is a different question because uh, the person who I know, the person who asked the question looks at the longer term, I'm going to say at 68.13 on Devon Energy, in your case, I'm not going to say take a little bit off. I'm going to say add a little bit on as a trading position because you want to accumulate as much garner, as much profits, as percentages as possible. Here at 68.11, I'd have a 60, just for the moment, I'd have a 65, about a 5% stop on this new added small position. And I'd treat it with a trading stop and as it moves higher, just peel off whatever you can um, and just treat it as a trade where you know what you, you, you can lose. I would raise the stop as a trading stop so you can lose between 5 to 3% of what you're putting in. But as it moves up, you'll start to get all of that back. The potential that you would have lost, you'll be making on the upside. But it is um, it's acting very well. The weekly chart is the one that says to me how it handles next week is going to be very important because if it breaks and closes under 64, this is okay. Now we're going to have some kind of a consolidation. So in the long-term aspect, there's one way of looking at it. Shorter term, I'd say, if you're asking the question, take a little bit off, make yourself comfortable. Make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in a moment. That was a champion. That was down 655. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, so we're looking at Sting Scorpio, <coughs> Scorpio Tankers, question came in. I believe it's making a peak E today. If it doesn't make a higher high than yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, our legs see in the weekly chart still very strong. Scorpio Tankers and legs see in the monthly chart. What I would say is if you um, are looking to put some money to work in this, I would probably say wait a little while. Let me just see what NAT and Nordic Tankers is doing. Where did I type that wrong place? NAT, there we go. NAT, also pulling back. Yeah, that's not as good. Uh, let me look at SHIP, and this is the other one that I like to look at. Uh, oh, it had a rally, and now it's pulling back a little bit. Let me look at uh, DSX, Diana Shipping. Uh, yep, had a rally and pulling back. Yes, I'm going to say Sting. I don't know. They, they. I don't know exactly what if they are in uh, oil uh, shipping or w which shippers they are. But I am going to say 25.95. It's a little bit overboard. I'd probably give me a yell. Let's look at it together. If it gets to 24.50 to 23.90 in the next three days, if it just holds here and 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 doesn't break under 24.92, the nine period exponential moving average. Let's go 24.16, the 14 period moving average. That is really strong. That's very good action because the MACD is very good. Stochastic's at 89%. I'm just thinking on a short-term basis, it could probably take out the low of the candle of yesterday. That's going to be really important. So within the context of uh, <clears throat> within the context of the spike to the upside here, that holding yesterday's low is going to be very important. Uh, I believe you are in it, and if you're looking to add, I wouldn't get out of it. At this point, I think it's still in play, but 225.94 was a low of 20 today so far. 25.46 is a low of yesterday. It goes under 25.30, and then I'm th saying it's going to be a digestive phase. Next question we had was, uh, wait, let me look at my questions here. I did that, did that. Oh, gold. G-O-L-D. Not gold, gold, but gold. Uh, Barrick Gold. Um, now this is this is the whole thing about the the, the uh, gap. Look, you see this little gap right here in Barrick Gold trading at 22.71, down 48 cents today. It's how it gets filled and how it breaks and holds above the gap, the day of the gap, day before the gap. That is the low. And it's got to hold sharply above there for two out of three sessions. Today, try to fill the gap. It couldn't. And now it's way below. So I'm just saying, at this particular point, gold is struggling. It's not acting badly at all when you think that. I keep saying this. When you think that, I'll do, I must remind myself tomorrow, Friday, I'll talk about Goldie et al. We'll do that tomorrow. So you can see now gold is up 16. It's still, wow, up 16 is big, but not if you're looking at the context of where it was earlier today and where it is now. And it's just difficult. It is a struggle. 
Okay, now let's go on to this next question. I did that, did that, did that. Oh, and I had TBT. Oh, um, morning, Basil. I know you talked about the TBT, but I would like you to look at some levels where you would sell an ad. I'm in at 17.68 and did take some off 17.68 TBT. That sounds fabulous. Yeah, very good. Uh, TBT. And, and, and did take some off in the 23s. I plan on holding for the long term and would like to add on pullbacks. What levels should I be looking at? Thanks, Greg. Greg, I'm going to do this now, but tomorrow I'm going to just spend a little time because I have already had five or six questions about the TBT. So let me do this. I'm just going to say I got this in leg D. If you looked at my charts with the triple yield charts, the weekly triple yield charts, they were just skyrocketing. They were rocketing to the upside. Invariably moves like that, we just saw this from yesterday, a rocket ship move should only give back a certain percentage, 20%, maybe 25, maybe even 30%, but immediately come back and try to test the previous high. If it does more, as we're looking at the down now, down 737, this would be down 117. That just says that the move yesterday was a fake out, and you've got to be really, really careful. So looking at the weekly chart of the TBT, look at that. 22.60 uh, was the high in June of, sorry, in March of 2021. I took it from a high. I just took it from a, a horizontal level going back to February of 2020. The real high was the high of, the week of the eighth of, yeah, the week of the eighth of November, at twenty-seven thirty-two, and today we hit twenty-six forty-six. So we're getting close to where you would expect some kind of resistance level. Now you said you took profits at twenty in the twenty-threes, and here we are at twenty-six point forty-three. I know. In a way, it feels upsetting to see it continue higher. When it did make that peak G right there um, recently, it was a G slash B. I said, I'm going to consider that if it, it makes a cup formation and takes out that high, I'm calling it a C, which I did. And then the request this morning was, or statement was, are we making that leg D in the TBT? And the answer is absolutely, we're in leg D. But the technicals are still very strong. Put this in the category of oil for now. And all you can say is, within that context, um, we're looking at demand for the TBT there. And I would scale as you're looking in levels to, 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 to get in. And I'm just going to say, with your long-term holding, with you having taken off at 23, um, as a long-term position, in this particular case, I'm really talking a couple of months. And for me, that's long term. There are other long term positions like the dollar from the 90.07 low back in 2018, where we got it, where we've seen, ridden up all the way up. We've taken only one profit off at 96 something um, and we, uh, via the UUP. And I'm still holding it right now because this is such a critical moment. That's very different. But in your case, I think you're looking at longer term, whatever the long term is, because you haven't decided when you'll exit. That's really the way we're looking at it there. So what I'm going to say to you is, yeah, 26.46, let's give it another day. Let me do a little bit of work on, on uh, the easy thing to say is take a little bit off here. I don't really see a reason technically other than to say because it looks high, you should take something off. So it might be a waste of time saying to you, I uh, take a little bit off and then tomorrow I do the analysis and say, oh, man, it's a little higher. You could have got an even better price. I don't mind at this point saying I'm going to go through those because those are levels that I would like myself. For my for subscribers, they've been asking, when can we get into the TBT? There was an opportunity. I didn't take it. We were looking at other things, and it's a shame. So I, I'm going to hold off on that. So a question, maybe wants to know, could I please uh, review MRO? MRO is in the same category. Um, it had that big spike. I'm calling this, in this particular instance, just for argument's sake, this gave me all the signals you need to go from a, a buy signal to a buy mode. But the stochastic is only at 66. So MRO, um, and it's trading at 29 was the high today, round number 29. And uh, it's trading at 28.16. I'm going to just 
because I want to be as strict as possible to my methodology. I'm calling this F slash C at the moment. Everything about it suggests that it could start to pull back, but it's, and it's a very quick peak E to leg F in the uh, weekly chart. And it's a huge marathon oil leg E in the month. I'll do a little work at the right back. So one question is, uh, yeah, I'll be back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So just real quick, so really, I'm going to say to you with your MRO because you're long, I'm going to say at this particular level right here, as opposed to what we were looking at before, but because you asked the question, I'm going to say take a little bit off, 28.16, up 46 cents. Um, I, the, I have two wave counts. One says that this is an F. If there is a slide that goes below 27 by t Monday or Tuesday this coming week, then, then it's going to go into a sideways consolidation phase. Nothing wrong with that. It's been a spectacular stock. You would expect uh, some kind of a consolidation. But at the same time, I'm not going to say I'm going to do a little more work tomorrow. I'll come back to it. I'm going to say I would not get out of it, but I definitely would take a little bit off because in this particular instance, it's money that you could put back about maybe two points slower if that's the way you would like to do it. Another question is the QQQ. Is this a time to be buying? Um, uh, hi, Basil. Sorry, I may have missed uh, your advice on the show. Uh, would you be buying technology stocks QQQ right here? Well, we did yesterday, but we're out. And I don't, I don't like what I'm seeing right here, but I am kind of, watching to see something like an ARKK because it's got so many of the stocks that need to rally right now. Uh, so we have no position there. I'm watching this closely because it's given back 
a good chunk of the gain, and it's even gone halfway into the candle of yesterday, which says you've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, it has to rally within the next uh, 30 to 50 minutes. It needs to get off the 48.67 level. I would not be doing any buying in the tech area at this particular point. I think we missed a really good. If you are trying to get in, that was just a great trade yesterday. I would not put myself out at this particular point. And right here, as we're speaking, the ES Mini, that is the, uh, let me just get to it right here so that we don't run out of time. Look, you had this left side, right side price tie match. It broke below it over there at about 42.09. Now to give back everything from the Fed, we've got, usually you would go between the last, the first up bar low and the low bar itself, somewhere in the middle, right here. Is we at, at 41.63. We're at 41.66 right now. That's where you start to see a great rally. Yesterday, right at this moment, Larry was in the most fantastic trade, just a spectacular trade uh, during his show. Oh, it was earlier on. I did a spectacular trade, and it's just a beautiful thing to see right there at 11.40. Uh, check out his.